Coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, Vocabulary, Words and Dictionaries, Part 2. Hi, my name is Guy Trin and this is Mobile Learning in the Classroom from TechEdge and today we're doing part two of vocabulary, words and dictionaries and what I want to start with is etymology. Etymology is really a powerful tool because it helps kids and adults realize how words are connected and how the roots operate to create families of words that are related to each other. Now, there is a certain level of uh, etymology that becomes just a point of interest and that's great too because kids can be really curious about words where they come from and if they get really interested in words it's a win for everybody they're learning they're inquiring about new words where they came from and it becomes a something they're interested in and the culture of rich vocabulary rich discussion around vocabulary can really propel the understanding of new words. So uh, the first tool I want to talk about is really, really simple. Inside your Google search, if you do a word and after that you write etymology. So I'm doing it right now and I'm looking for the word captain and the etymology of captain. And what you get is a very simple map of where the word came from. And so we've got the Latin into late Latin and old French, and then two words in old French, one connected to it and one that is a variant, chieftain versus captain. And then, the, in English, the word captain as compared to the word chief, which we borrowed from the French a little bit later. And look how uh, elegant it is. It's really quick. You get the sense of where it came from. And then if you want more, you can get more. And you can see immediately it gives you more definitions and all of that information. And even the graph of how much that word is being used over time. And this comes from uh, the Google Ngram, which can track the, the amount of words is used in published sources. So you can see that it was used a lot until 1800, and then uh, it's being used less. You can uh, have, so you can have more information. So that's the easiest way to get word etymology. This is a fantastic service from Google, and I love that aspect of it. But if you want something a little bit different, there is an online etymology uh, dictionary. And it's just etymology, etymoonline.com. And you just type a word. Let's type the same word, captain. And now we're getting the sources. When did it start? 1590s. What was it before? 14th century. So you can see this build over time and words that are related to it that show up there. As well, as well. So this is a really easy way to get etymology of uh, words, modern or not so modern. And this, what I love about this dictionary, it's very short. It gives you a quick answer. So it's another way to just get an answer. Uh, if you want something more uh, complicated and, and more breadth of where this word has been used, the Oxford English Dictionary is probably your best bet. This is traditionally the place that most people go to get the, the last word on these issues. And the OED has been really uh, doing this for over a uh, hundred years and now they're online and in many ways you can get a lot of results online. So if we look at a different word but related, the word capital, and we do a search, we'll obviously get some definitions, right? So you can see the uh, definitions, time capsules, and um, let's go to um, Let's go home and search for the word again. So we're searching for the word capital. And what you can see is that immediately you get a basic entry that you can expand. So let's view the full entry. And what I love is on the right hand side, you can see that the words that are next to it in the dictionaries actually show up. And I love that feature because the one thing we lose when we look for words online is we lose where they are in the sequence and what's just before them and what's just after them, which is one of the most fun things to do in the dictionary is to see what words are right around. And sometimes you find fantastic words that way. So we haven't lost that feature in this setup. And what you can see is you get a definition. Uh, you get an etymology, where did it come from, Anglo-Norman and Middle French, capital, 
and then you get specific dates and specific quotes from a historical document so you can actually start tracking how it was used over time which is a fantastic rich resource if you're exploring a specific word so if you're looking for the short answer I would go with etymology online or with Google but if you want something with depth and multiple sources um, the OED the Oxford English Dictionary is probably where you want to go the next resource is a different resource it's a resource I talked about a long time ago it's available on the iPads I love it actually on the iPad but also on the computer it's the uh, visual thesaurus and in the visual thesaurus uh, you can get a few things for free and then you have to pay I still think it's a fantastic instrument to explore the connections between words and to really see how things relate to each other so if we're looking for a word like run you can see the connection so I just type the word and it shows me which words are connected to it and you see on the side that you can see which ones are nouns which ones are connected to the meaning of the word run as a verb and different meanings and that's how the network is connected and what I love about this in a in the visual format is that clicking on any of the words opens up a new network of words that allows you to see how these specific features are connected to each other and not just to the original word and so there's a way to go uh, back and forth within those networks to discover lots of words and to find out how these words are connected to each other. And the powerful thing here is that it allows kids, just like with etymology, to explore, to enjoy themselves, to be curious about words and how they're connected without roaming through a huge dictionary and also in a way that promotes those connections. How are things, how are words and concepts linked to each other? And that's a powerful way to learn lots about words. So so this is Visual Thesaurus, uh, available at visualthesaurus.com or on an app. So both will work. It'll run on Chrome, it'll run anywhere else, and you can get a 14-day trial if you want to try it. I find it powerful when, when I use it with students and show them the capacity. Uh, as future teachers, uh, there are uh, different subscriptions available, so that's something to explore. But even as a free resource a few times, I think it's worth it. The last thing that I want to talk about is an app called Grammarly. Um, there's a free version and a paid version in Grammarly and it allows you to edit anything you write. So it's a different take on uh, vocabulary and words from my perspective. And what it does is it helps go through anything you wrote and analyze it for repetitive patterns, for grammar and for spelling word meaning. So Grammarly will point out any problems you have. For example, if you're using a lot of passive voice, it will tell you overused. It's saying, well, extremely is fine, but that's one of those common words. Can you use a different word that will be more specific, more precise and will enhance your writing? So it's a way to get that review. Um, I use Grammarly on a daily basis. Um, I highly recommend it, but there is a paid subscription beyond the basic analysis of words, so you do want to consider whether that's worth doing for, what, uh, for the amount of work you're doing. But I, even at the free version, there are features that really help you understand what you're doing and what you're not doing. Uh, you get a weekly summary of what errors you're making, how much you've been writing, things like that, which is really, really great. So uh, it's a great way to enhance a vocabulary and word choice from the writing perspective not just from reading and discovering new words. So today in mobile learning in the classroom we finished part two of uh, talking about vocabulary, words and dictionaries and I'll see you next time on mobile learning in the classroom.